Hi, I'm Cayman Reynolds, and this is a question I get a lot. I get a couple questions about feeding packages and nukes after you receive them, how much to feed, how long to feed, when you should add another box. There's so many dynamics to what could be going on in your area, and I want to break down the variables as I understand it after 20 years of keeping bees, making splits, raising my own queens, buying packages, buying nukes, selling nukes, kind of all the dynamics I think behind it. Right now we have black locusts. For those of you who don't know, it's a good nectar producer. We also have um, empress trees, polonias. We also have other types of nectar crops like snow flowers and autumn olive just finishing up. So there's nectar coming in. Our big honey production colonies are starting to put nectar in the honey supers. Does this mean that we don't feed any smaller colonies? And the answer is maybe. Flows vary significantly. Strong flows can fill up even smallish sized colonies very quickly. Where light flows may leave a small colony on the brink of going backwards due to a lack of nutrition and energy from nectar and honey. Where the large colonies you go into them and they're like, wow, they're doing great. The little colonies can't do much. So let's get into a couple of these colonies and show you why I'm fixing to feed them even though our big colonies aren't getting any feed because they don't need it. We'll also have to talk about, I've got two hive tools, man, I am prepared. I mean, and for those of you who haven't beekeeped long, uh, if you want to have a hive tool available at all times, you probably need to own three or four because they have legs and they, they walk away. So I have different types of feeders up here. These are all top feeders. I have a quart jar, I have a gallon, and I have a two gallon. Now for this time of the year, being as I know we're coming upon the honey flow, and our strongest part of the flow is blackberry and clover, which has not started yet, we want to be careful not to overfeed. You, it can go either way, but you definitely don't want to underfeed because if your bees just miss out on a couple days worth of food that they need, it significantly retards their growth. We got to view, you know, as mammals, we store more energy in our bodies. We can go a couple days without food, and some of us probably could get a favor done out of going without some food. And so can horses and stuff like that, but it's still a little bit of a stress though. Bees, a couple days without food, they will start cannibalizing brood many times and cutting back on their growth significantly. So let's get down into here and use smoke. That's the best way to do it. However, colonies that are young like this typically are really good about being gentle. Watch me get drilled. Now I'm looking down into this colony and I'm looking for food. I'm also going to be looking for brood. These were a handful of packages that we got for our experimentation this year. All right, so I'm looking down into here and let's pull this frame out. You're going to love this. If you don't, beekeeping might not be for you. Now look at that right there. Look at all of that brood. And some of you are going to look at this right here and go, oh no, they're fixing to swarm. This is just a cup. It is dry. Honeybees keep a few of those around, but you can check them out. Here's one down here, excuse me, and pull it on up. But whenever they want to start swarming, that is where they will make the queen cells from. And it could be up here, it could be down here. Swarm cells can be anywhere in the hive. Now, this is just mostly capped brood. The other side of the frame, even better. So when this emerges out, this is gonna cover about three frames worth of bees. So this colony's fixing to grow and that's just from one frame. When we installed these packages like we showed you in this video, I'm gonna leave up here if you wanna see how we installed these. We gave them, right afterwards, a gallon of food apiece. Except a couple of them. They got quart jars because they were a little bit smaller. I think the drift kind of got to them, went to colonies like this one. And so we, we gave them like half a gallon, filled this up twice. But we have more brood being capped over here. But one thing maybe you've noticed already, 
and you should always be noticing is what do the food reserves look like so in this frame right here there's some in the corners a little bit in the tops there wasn't much in the other frame it was mostly brood that's not much food for this many bees that's not enough to sustain that so where is the food in this colony and I see a little bit here the food is typically on the edge of the brood nests but these bees could be living from hand to mouth for all we know and just have just enough to keep going so now I'm looking over here and you can't see it super well because it's yellow foundation underneath but there's tons of larvae down in there and again just a little bit of a line of food above this colony is just five four or five days of rainy weather from going backwards a little bit maybe less than that and so you can see we have bee bread up in here which is also important it takes about a frame of honey and a, a frame of bee bread to make a solid frame of brood roughly so you're like well how is this all working out they're bringing it in and they're converting it right into bees so again if something bad happens with the weather or the flow ends for whatever reason or you have gaps in your flows then this colony is going to go backwards quickly a colony like this needs to have more food than just one or two frames a good strong colony needs to have at least three deep frames worth of food to act properly so this colony does not have enough doesn't matter if the big guys are doing okay this is the best frame of food so far and this isn't even completely full on this side and is completely empty on this side we need to feed this colony it's looking great it has a ton of potential but we need to feed them and we have combs this helps out a lot if we didn't have combs and this was all foundations like many of you start with then you'd have to feed even more already because they're not only converting that energy into keeping the brood warm and feeding the new bees and themselves but then on top of that they have to gorge on the sugar syrup or nectar that's coming in or both to create all those wax scales to create comb for you so where we fed a gallon a piece for these you probably need to at least feed two gallons we're going to put a gallon of feed on this colony now we have to be careful because i said there's variables the blackberry blossom flow is fixing to start and when it's good i mean it is real good they just come in laden with nectar and what can happen is within five days to a week they could fill all this out with nectar and then the pollens and then the brood and that congestion is the number one reason colonies swarm and yes you can get a package and within a month or so they're wanting to swarm if they get congested so how do we prevent that well i'll have another video on that before too long but in layman's terms if you have foundation once they've started drawing well on the seventh frame go down find a frame of eggs or larvae not capped brood pull that out put another frame of foundation below and then stack your second box of foundations on and put that larvae right above the rest of the brood that way the heat coming from where the bees are clustering if you get a cool night is still going to aid those larvae and bringing that larvae up really helps because they have to have food and combs nearby the larvae because that's where they store the bee bread and they need to be able to have that close to the larvae because it takes hundreds and hundreds of visits to well, thousands and thousands just for one frame to be fed properly so they need resources nearby and that'll help you get them drawn you don't want to wait till this box is this full before adding the box because if you have a strong flow where you're feeding heavy they'll plug up and they'll start getting that swarm mode and bees are all about stimuli so it's you got to keep them in expansion mode not in reproductive mode it's all about stimuli with bees so we want to keep them in the stimuli that keeps them from wanting to swarm also if you have comb same principle once they get about seven frames at the most go ahead and throw another box of comb you don't have to bring up a frame of larvae because bees just absolutely love comb as you put these back together try to put them in the same direction as you pulled them out i don't do this 100 percent of the time like i said sometimes i'm moving frames around a little bit Woo, those bees are not happy 
and I can't remember 100% how these went in there. It's best to try to keep it the same way as possible. But also keep in mind when you're feeding, don't overdo it, especially during the honey flow. Know your seasons. Talk to local beekeepers who are successful and learn what they say about the flows. And also realize from year to year, one year you might be feeding at this time, one year you might be adding honey supers at this time. We are two weeks behind where we usually are with our natural honey flows. That shows you how big of a difference there could be from year to year. Two weeks of neglect on a colony like this, not having enough food, means this colony could die if it runs out of too much food. This is like a newborn calf and they need a lot more attention. But look at the potential with this colony. It's going to be excellent. That's going to cover three frames of bees, of combs, just when that emerges out in less than 13 days. I'm looking over here on this edge frame and there's no honey on this side. This colony absolutely needs to be fed. We're just going to carefully push these back together. So how are we going to feed and how much do we feed? Again, if we know our season like I do, I know there could be a huge influx of nectar coming in. So what I'm going to do, and I need to add another comb in here. There's only nine. I'd like to keep ten in here. Is we are going to feed extra thin syrup because we want them to keep going forward, but we don't want to backfill that area. And hopefully, we'll time it just right to where when we stop feeding, the natural flow will start and everything will just take off just right. But to be on the safe side, instead of feeding one to one syrup, which is one pound of sugar to one pound of water ratio, we're going to do three quarters of a pound of sugar to one pound of water. So it's even thinner. There's nothing wrong with this. The bee books, you got to realize, really keep it general for new beekeepers. They try not to overcomplicate it, which is okay to a degree, but if you're not wanting to stay a beginner, then you need to get information that's a little bit more advanced. You can tweak your syrup ratios based on your bees' needs. It's not a matter of, we only can do this at this time of the year. So we're going to feed extra thin syrup because we're not trying to add a lot of poundage. We're just trying to get them from the point they are now to where they can be big enough and have a big enough forager population to go out there and get the real stuff. Keep in mind little colonies like this also have very few adult bees to the brood ratio. That brood has to stay over 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So even if there is a great crop out there, a halfway decent one, if it's not really warm, maybe it's only 60 degrees, a lot of those bees have to stay back and keep that brood warm so they can't devote as many bees towards foraging. It's a complicated thing and there's a lot of variables. So as beekeepers, getting into your hives for a couple minutes and seeing what's going on is really helpful. So what we got here is a one gallon bucket. It's gonna have thin syrup. It's got a little bit left from the last time and it's a little fermented, probably. So we're just gonna check that out. Now I'm just going to fill this up. And this is less than one to one thickness. So when this condenses down to a honey thickness, probably less than a quart of actual honey thick food in this container. But this is just to help them draw a little bit of comb to repair some of those older combs that have been sitting in my shed. We'll just turn that over. And now they're good for a, a good little while. When we come back, we're gonna get back into the colony and check and see what the food levels are. But I'll bet by the time this gallon's done, they won't need any feed until we get into June, past our honey flow, and then it'll be the dearth period. Hopefully they'll store enough from the real honey flow. We want to feed them throughout the summer, but if we do, we will. First year colonies need extra TLC, but with good care and a good queen and low mite loads, we'll produce over 100 pounds off of this colony next year of real honey, and not have to feed near as much as we did this year. Thanks for watching this video. There's a lot of dynamics when it comes to feeding. I hope this has explained a little bit to you and have a great spring.